So these props are 3D printed in plastic, but these ones are 3D printed out of liquid resin. But which one's better for cosplay and props, plastic or resin? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Frank. And today I want to talk about the differences between 3D printing in plastics or FDM 3D printing or printing with liquid resin or SLA 3D printing. FDM or plastic 3D printing is the version most of you are going to be familiar with. In the case of plastic, the printers are basically just an advanced hot glue gun that melt this stuff down and let you make a bunch of cool shapes. Most of the props and cosplay in my videos uses FDM or plastic 3D printing. Both of my Iron Man suits completely FDM plastic printed. But recently I've been experimenting more with resin 3D printing and this this isn't a new technology by any means, but the cost of it and the availability has come down significantly so more people are able to access resin printing for their cosplay and props. And you can make some absolutely awesome helmets with resin 3D printing, but the cost kind of goes up. Both of these mediums absolutely have their own pros and cons. One isn't just outright better than the other. So let's get out to the garage and I want to show you guys some of the plastic 3D printers I have and some of the resin 3D printers I have and we can start talking about the costs and the effectiveness and which one is better for what you're trying to do. Ha. Okay, so here we are in the garage and behind me I have an FDM plastic 3D printer and I have a resin 3D printer. So before you can even print anything, what do you need to even get started between plastic and resin? In terms of an FDM plastic printer, all you really need is, well, somewhere to put the printer and a couple rolls of filament. Once you have the printer and filament, you can pretty much just start 3D printing stuff. But as for resin printing, you're gonna need a lot more. Not only do you need somewhere safe to store the resin, this stuff is toxic and this isn't something you want having in your house off gassing fumes, you're gonna need a well ventilated area, a garage, or a lot of air purifiers. You're also gonna need a wash and cure station, which I have one right behind me. Not only do you need to print with the resin, you then need to remove the resin parts off of the build plate, wash off all of the uncured excess resin with something like isopropyl alcohol, that's the wash part, and then you need to cure it in some type of UV light. Now, yeah, you can put these outside and just kind of have them sit and bask in the sun, but if you live somewhere like in England, that's not really gonna be an option for you. I lived there for four years, don't tell me about how much the sun comes out. And honestly, this stuff is just more toxic to work with. I probably should be wearing a mask right now. Do as I say, not as I do. I have an entire space dedicated over here for my wash and cure station. I have a way to pour uncured resin back into the bottle. You need rags and gloves and paint strainers and some type of filter. There's a lot more that goes into resin printing than just getting the resin printer and throwing it on your shelf. Now, of course, there are ways to cut corners and minimize the footprint of all of this stuff. I totally understand that, but it doesn't matter. An FDM printer is always going to take up less room. Now, let's talk about build size and volume. What can you print on these things? This is the build plate off of a relatively cheap resin 3D printer. This resin printer costs about $300. And as you can see, the build plate is about the same size as my phone. You can't really print many big things off of this. Now for the same price, you can get an FDM 3D printer like the Sovel SV01 Pro that has a much larger build volume. And the cost versus size difference between resin and FDM pretty much just continues to go up from there. This is the build plate off the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, and this is the build plate off of the Elegoo Saturn 2, and there is a stark difference in the size of them. Not to mention a height difference. You can print nearly twice as tall on the Neptune 3 Plus. And both of these printers are about the same price. But don't forget, you also need to buy some type of wash and cure station for the Saturn. And it keeps going up from there. This is the build plate off of the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max, and this is a sub $500 plastic 3D printer. It is massive, and this is the build plate off of the Frozen Sonic Mega AK. This is a $2,400 resin 3D printer. The size difference is pretty obvious. And the last thing in terms of cost to consider is the actual material, where rolls of filament, PLA, PTG, they can run anywhere from 15 to 30 bucks depending on you know the brands and the quality you want. Re bottles of resin can run anywhere from $30 to $50. There are cheaper resins out there, but sometimes you get what you pay for. So just the production cost of some of these pieces can more than double if you're dealing with resin. Not to mention you can't accidentally ruin plastic printing by exposing it to UV light. If I leave a window open and open up one of my resin printers, I can ruin a lot of resin instantly. So if plastic printers are cheaper, take up less space, and can print even bigger, what's even the point of resin? Well, quality. This is a plastic printed Red Hood helmet, and while it's not my best print by any means, there are a good amount of layer lines on it, and this is gonna require a lot of post-processing. I'm gonna have to do a lot of sanding on this, and we're, no, we're not here to debate post-processing methods. Smooth it out however you want. You can make any plastic print look good with enough sanding and hard work. 
but this is a raw 3D printed Iron Man helmet off of a resin printer, and it is smooth. Aside from imperfections that are my own fault and just the way I was learning how to resin print, I can pretty much sand this with 200 grit sandpaper really quickly, move up to 500 grit, and just prime this almost instantly. But do not be tricked by all those people who say, oh, you don't need to sand resin prints at all. You are lying. If you're only printing small miniatures that have tons of detail on them, yes, those details are actually gonna hide the layer lines. But when you start resin printing really large stuff, you're gonna actually start to see some of those layer lines on the prints big smooth surfaces like this, it's still gonna have stepping and there is still post-processing. However, it is massively quicker and easier to sand a resin print than it is to sand a plastic print. But just always make sure you're wearing a respirator because even cured resin, the dust and particles can be very bad for you. Heck, any plastic particles can be bad for you. This is another resin printed Iron Man helmet that I actually put some elbow grease into and it is so much easier to get a nice smooth finish on these helmets over plastic printing. And just check out the detail on this Mark 50 helmet. This inner faceplate, FDM printing would have a lot of trouble nailing all of these details. It wouldn't be impossible, but sanding all of that down to get it nice and smooth and crisp would be a nightmare. A resin printer can just do this. But with that said, I wouldn't go and resin print something like a Mandalorian helmet. There's a lot of huge smooth surfaces on this that I can quickly power sand down or use some type of filler product. This would be a very big and expensive resin 3D print when my FDM plastic printer can handle it just fine. So why such a big quality difference between resin printing and plastic printing? Well, how about I explain what's actually happening on an FDM printer and then I'll go over what's happening on a resin printer. FDM plastic printers that use spools of filament are actually pretty easy to understand. It's just taking the tip of this filament, pulling it or pushing it through a hot end and just laying it down like hot glue. Because this nozzle head gets moved in three different dimensions, an X, Y, and a Z, it can make something like a pyramid. It'll lay down the initial shape, melt the plastic, move up, and then melt another layer on top of it. But because there's so many moving parts on a plastic printer, it moves in three different axes, and you can only melt plastic so perfectly, there is gonna be a limit to that quality because you're just stacking melted plastic on top of each other. Now, plastic printers are getting better and better every day, but I do still think there is going to be a limit on just how nice of a product they can produce. Where something like a resin printer, I personally think, is a lot cooler to explain and learn about. Resin printers are actually very simply designed. You have your vat of resin here, and this is where the print comes out of. And it's not even an inch deep. This is where the resin sits on the printer. But we're gonna take that off for a second. And then you have your build plate, which lowers into the resin. And then you have an LCD screen. And underneath that LCD screen, you have a UV light. Remember how we talked about earlier that the resin cures with UV light? That's all that's happening here. Now what this screen is doing is it's blocking out all of that UV light from shining up. However, what if the LCD screen was to draw a picture or an image and allow only that shape to be projected through the screen? Now with all of that working together, let's imagine that this build plate lowers into the vat of resin, but it doesn't touch the bottom. Imagine it floats ever so perfectly and closely, enough for one layer of resin to flow in between the plate and the bottom of the screen. And if it was to cast or flash that image that on that LCD screen and allow a certain shape to be projected through, it would cure the resin that's sitting on the build plate. Then what the plate does is once the resin's cured, it lifts up and pulls itself away from the screen and then lowers back down. But it's not gonna lower the same distance, it's gonna keep a gap constantly keeping a gap between where it lowers, allowing new resin to flow in. And because this is only moving in one direction, one Z axis up and down, there's nearly no wobble or movement on the printer. It goes slow enough for the resin to lay itself back down into that gap it's created, it flashes it, nothing moved, it lifts up and it continues to do that. And then you're able to get a large print out of a skinny thin piece of resin vat plastic. That's how we're able to make something like a faceplate that is very, very much clearly bigger than the plate. This would never fit in there, but since it's coming out of liquid and it's always just being refilled, something like this printer can print a pretty tall faceplate with no problem. And because this uncured liquid resin is a lot more predictable than melting plastic and slinging it around a bed plate, you can get much smaller and thinner layers. This liquid is gonna um, flow into that cavity that it's created a lot easier than some melted plastic. And what that ends up giving you is just incredible detail. Look at the stairs inside of this chess piece. This is, this is nutty, this is beautiful, and this is what a resin printer can do. So all of this to say, which one's better? 
both, neither, A or B. It very much depends on what you're trying to make. FDM plastic printing is great for large props, armor, cosplay, giant big swords that you could never hope to print on a small resin printer. I very much recommend this to anybody starting out in cosplay. Make a Mjolnir, make a Thor's hammer, make your first Iron Man suit. It is cheaper, it takes up less space, and it is just an easier hobby to break out into. Also, the parts are gonna be lighter. Resin can get kind of heavy, but there are ways around that, don't worry. But why not use resin 3D printing to add on and supplement your cosplay armors and props. Maybe print something like Thor's hammer, but then you resin print all of the little details because it could handle it even better. Plastic print the helmet because it's actually kind of smooth, but resin 3D print all of the inner details. Resin printing can be absolutely invaluable to handling all those fine and intricate details to your props and projects. A perfect example of combining both mediums is this new Demon Slayer katana I'm working on, where I was able to plastic FDM print all of the long parts, the blade, things I wasn't going to resin print anyway. I used my resin printers to supplement and print all of the cool little details and bits that go on it. This is awesome. I do hope you guys learned something throughout this video and hopefully it helps you make up your mind on what printer you want to start with. If you're just looking at small, intricate, fine stuff, resin printing is probably the way to go. Or if you're just trying to break out into big, obnoxious cosplay and props and print your own Buzz Lightyear or Iron Man suit, plastic 3D printing may be the way to go. It's going to hurt your wallet less in the short term, but make sure you break out that sandpaper and filler primer. If you guys want to compare the two mediums start to finish, I did just release this Mandalorian build video and this is a fully plastic printed helmet. Start to finish, you can watch the whole process on how I got it nice and shiny. Or you can go and check out the new Blue Beetle video and that is a fully resin printed helmet. And you can see I was able to skip a lot of steps and just get to the final product much quicker. But as always, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video or maybe something I didn't cover, please leave some comments down below. I read all of them and I do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out immensely and it keeps you guys up to date on all the videos I have coming out. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. I got to go beat up some weird Michael Jackson demon thingy. Hey